In section 2.10, our goals are to find percent change and to find relative error. So percent change is the ratio of the amount of change to the original amount. Remember, ratio is just a fraction or comparison of two quantities. And this formula below is important, so write this down. Percent change is equal to the amount of increase or decrease on top divided by the original. So the original is always in the denominator because you're comparing the change with the original. And there's two types of percent changes. The first is in an increase, so the amount of increase. The way that you figure out the amount of increase is you take the new amount and you subtract the original amount. And the reason why we do that is because the new amount will be higher than the original amount. Whereas when we have decrease involved, the original amount, we're going to subtract the new amount from the original amount because the original amount was more than the new amount. You always want to have a positive value. That's the whole goal. So that's increase and decrease. And now we're going to try two problems that use this knowledge. A coat is on sale. The original price of the coat is $82. The sale price is $74.50. What is the discount expressed as a percent change? Well, first of all, let's figure out if this is increase or decrease. When you buy something at the store, what does a sale mean? Well, if something is on sale, the price is decreasing, right? You don't want to buy something for higher than what it's going for. You want to buy something for cheaper or lower. So we're finding the percent decrease. And remember, in percent decrease, we're doing the original, and we're subtracting the new from that. And we have the original in the bottom. The original is always in the bottom, whether it's increase or decrease. So now let's plug in, let's see, which one's the original? 82. So it's 82, and then the new is 74.50. And the original on the bottom is 82 again. When you do the subtraction in the numerator, you get 7.5, and you divide by 82, and we get approximately 0 0.09. Remember, this is not in percent form. We need to move the decimal over twice. We're multiplying by 100, essentially. So when you move the decimal over, you get 9%, and that is decrease. So technically, that isn't such a good sale. It depends if you really want the code or not. In example two, we have this situation. Suppose that Joe's Music Store in Willoughby buys an electric guitar for $2.95. The store then marks up the price of the guitar to $3.40. What is the markup expressed as a percent change? So what's happening here is that the store is buying the guitar and they want to make a profit off of it. So that's why they're marking out the price. So that means we're going to be finding a percent increase. And for a percent increase, we're taking the new and subtracting the original, because the newer one is going to be higher, and the original's in the bottom. The new is 340, the old is 295, and that goes in the bottom as well. When you subtract, you get 45 divided by 295. And when you divide, we get approximately 0.15. Now remember, that's not in percent form yet. We need to move the decimal over twice, multiply by 100. So you get 15. percent increase. So that is the press percent that they're going to be getting for their profit. Now here's another concept that we're going to be studying. It's called relative error. Something that we should remember is that all measurements are approximations and have some degree of error. There's going to be some small mistake when we're measuring because we're human and we are not perfect. So here's the formula for relative error. 
you take the absolute value of the measured minus the actual and you divide by the actual. And when you change relative error into a percent, it's called percent error. So in example three, we have the following situation. A decorator estimates that a rectangular rug is five feet by eight feet. The rug is actually four feet by eight feet. What is the percent error in the estimated area? Well, let's use the formula that you just wrote down, percent error is equal to, now this is an estimated value, estimated 5 feet by 8 feet, and they're talking about the area. How do you find the area of a rectangle? Well, that is length times width. So what we're going to do, we're going to have estimated minus actual over actual estimated area 5 times 8. Now what is the actual area? The actual dimensions is 4 by 8, so 4 times 8. And then the bottom, the actual again, so 4 times 8. 5 times 8 is 40, minus 4 times 8 is 32, and the bottom is 32 as well. Bring down the absolute value signs. 40 minus 32 is 8. Absolute value of 8 is just itself. And in the bottom we have 32. When we reduce that we get 1 fourth or 0.25. What we need to do is just multiply by 100 to put it in percent form. So we get 25% off. So we can write estimated area is off by 25%. And that's actually a significant amount of error. So I'd be weary about this decorator if I were you. All right, last example. You are framing a poster and measure the length of the poster as 18.5 inches to the nearest half inch. What are the minimum and maximum possible lengths of the poster? Okay, so there's going to be some sort of error involved here. We're not looking for the error, we're just looking for the minimum and maximum lengths of the poster. You measured it as 18.5 inches to the nearest half inch. That means that this value is within one half of an inch. So this is 0.5. And 18.5 is halfway in the middle. So that means, what would each of those smaller sections be? They would be 0.25. So because you measured to the nearest half inch, the greatest possible error is 0.25. So what you do is you take your measurement of 0.5 and you divide by 2 equal sections. So we get 0.25 is the greatest possible error. So what we really need to do is just add 0.25 and subtract 0.25 and we'll get our answer. So the minimum length is going to be the smaller value, so we should subtract, and you get 18.25, and then the max length will be the bigger one, 18.5 plus 0 0.25, and you get 18.75, and they're measured in inches. And just to check to make sure, how about you subtract 18.75 minus 18.25 and you will get the 0.5 of the nearest half inch measurement. That completes this lesson. You can try the lesson check right now or you can wait until we do summer palms together during class.